And here we are, just outside, waiting to enter into the sanctum of the beautiful Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddess event. Well, not really. This is actually being recorded after. <laughs> because if we were recording before, it would have just been us going, we can't wait, we can't wait, we can't wait. <laughs> so, as the title says, me and Ember got to enjoy a wonderful concert called The Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddess. I think this one actually had the Master Quest after the title as well. It did, and you still can't say it properly. It's goddesses, plural. Remember, Hyrule is governed by the trifecta. It's always three of everything. I thought the concert just said goddess, referring to goddess Hylia. And nope. I took the liberty of grabbing one of our programs for reference, and it's Symphony of the Goddesses Master Quest. Ah, well, may as well add the intro here. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And since you can say it... <laughs> <laughs> And this is us raving about The Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses Master Quest Concert Series. Woohoo! That was an awesome concert. So many cosplayers, so much music. It brings a tear to the eye. <laughs> well, almost many times during the concert. <laughs> yes. If you hadn't been drugged up on cold medicine, probably more. <laughs> By the way, I almost killed him because he got sick. Yeah, and I'm still suffering the after effects. <laughs> Lucky for you guys, I'm editing out all the coughs. Unlucky for Ember, she gets to hear them. Mm-hmm. Ah, the presentation was wonderful. I got to take several pictures, which you should be seeing on screen right now. Ah, I even have a little video, which I'll probably put it at the end, since it was at the end of the concert where everyone was clapping and the orchestra's bowing and we were clapping translation there's no music to flag youtube <laughs> and they were displaying images from the games and all i kept thinking was oh those are wonderful images and i went oh wow if you haven't played any of these particular games at this time or at least not all the way through there's some pretty big spoilers in this <laughs> yes but i would think anyone going to this concert has probably played most of the games huh I just realized I don't remember if I saw any clips from Spirit Tracks. I remember seeing some from the Phantom Hourglass game, but I don't remember seeing any from Spirit Tracks. They may have been in there, but I don't remember them. Well, the two had somewhat similar animation styles, but I don't remember seeing the train, so... Mm-hmm. Or the Spirit Zelda in the Spirit Tracks games. But we did get a musical treat. We got to get some music from the new Legend of Zelda game that recently came out for the 3DS, Triforce Heroes. Yes, and so that was right at the beginning, so it's very nice how they're able to incorporate music from new games while still keeping their classic score program. Mm -hmm. Which is why, since it looks like they're having another one, there might be even more music for us to enjoy in that next one. So I really hope we get to go to that next one. And man, there was just so much awesome music from all the games performed by a full orchestra of very nice people. I got to talk to some of them after the performance was over. They were very nice. Yes, and don't forget we had an entire choral group adding vocals as well. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate part was from our seats, second row, uh, stage left, they were not very visible. And I'm still trying to figure out what was important about that particular violinist that came on stage. The one where I was like, oh, they're missing a violinist. And then that one came out on stage. She bowed. She also seemed to be directing the orchestra after the conductor. Yeah. After the conductor left the stage and was just about to come on stage, she seemed to be um, directing the rest of the orchestra. So I found that kind of interesting. Well, if you look at the location of her chair, she was probably first chair violin because there were three violinists, first chair, second chair, third chair. So she was first chair. Uh, so any particular pieces? I know you probably can't name them, but any particular part you can probably refer to that you really enjoyed? The part that really hit me was when they switched over to, I think it was Twilight Princess near the end. I was like, whoa, I'm almost coming to tears. <laughs> the thing about that really struck me. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all of it. There was a point partway through my, where my listening trance got broken, and so I was out of sync for a little bit. And I really liked that they 
alternated the gameplay images on the screens with live feed of the orchestra because sometimes I would forget to look back and forth between the orchestra and the screens. Also, I really like the pre-recorded videos oh, yeah. that were there. The ones from Miyamoto and the rest of the staff, like Eiji Numa and I can't say his name right now because I don't have a clear image of his head, but the guy who actually wrote a lot of the music for the original Zelda series and continues to write songs for it today. Keiji, Oka Keiji Kanda, I think his name is. <laughs> Uh, excuse my virtuing pronunciation of foreign words. <laughs> Koji Kondo. Koji Kondo. I'm guessing you took the time to look it up, huh? <laughs> yes. Because I knew I could remember Miyamoto and Anuma, but I'm like, I'm not going to correctly remember the composer's name because, you know, the composer usually doesn't make it onto episodes of Nintendo Direct and <laughs> is usually not on the stage during E3 very often. And from what I understand, the original Overworld melody for Zelda was actually written in like a weekend because they were, they were originally going to use a different tune, but then they found out like copyright or something was still in effect on that song. So he like whipped it up in a weekend. He's also known for listening to his music over and over again until he doesn't get tired of it. Meaning that like if he writes a song and he gets tired of it, he scraps it and starts over again. <laughs> Well, that's very important in video game composition when you're listening to music constantly. There are some modern games that could stand to learn from that. <laughs> Especially the ones that at the intro screen have some, well, this music's nice. Five minutes later, oh my god, someone give me a mute button. Please, where's the TV remote? Or you're walking through the overworld, which is huge and wonderful, but the same music over and over again like ah <laughs> going to the settings what do you mean they don't have a music volume adjust yeah <laughs> or at the weird times we're like why is the music so loud in this cutscene? i can't hear the dialogue <laughs> yes but back to the concert yep so super amazing and unlike the last concert that i attended sans lux um this was a very respectful audience. You didn't have a bunch of people talking or gesturing or getting up and leaving and coming back. We had a pause between each musical number that gave us plenty of time to applaud. Mm -hmm. Like the main reason we only ever stopped applauding is that the screen would change. And we're like, oh, they're supposed to be starting the next number. We want to hear this. Oh, yeah. The audience was very pleasant. And we got to talk with some people sitting around us before everything started. <laughs> Yeah, they, they were so Nintendo fans, because I realized we transitioned into a talk about Pokemon, and I didn't even, like, there wasn't even a flinch or anything, we just went straight into it. <laughs> and there were some other things I think, I didn't realize we could just move from con this conversation to this conversation so easily. It was kind of like being at the other conventions we've been to. <laughs> yes, when you have a group of like-minded fans together, some things become easier and some become more difficult. I also love how we kept like trying to, you gotta play this RPG, and you would pull out your 3DS and show it to them. Well, we were on the topic of RPGs. I happened to have just put the cartridge back into my system to clear the street passes. I was like, here, look at the shiny cutscenes. And here, let me pull up the main screen so you can see what I'm talking about with, you know, the battle system and stuff. Mm -hmm. And in case anyone's curious, it was Bravely Default. I mean, we mentioned Rhea Bell earlier, so. <laughs> oh, wait, that was a different podcast. <laughs> um, we have two videos of us blathering on about Bravely Default, plus that other little rant that I did by myself because I got tired of waiting for you. <laughs> I like the variety that they used in the game footage, going back to what I liked. It wasn't all, you know, the serious scenes and the climactic battles or, you know, the introductory storytelling. You know, there were plenty of little humorous bits and oddball pieces. You know, Link getting launched in a barrel, <laughs> Link asleep, young Link dancing with the two sisters from Majora's Mask, but also plenty of climactic battle scenes. Yeah, every time they played a different boss battle song, they would show a bunch of cuts from the boss battles, or they'd have one of the action songs pop up, then you would get a lot of cuts from certain scenes, like that scene from Skyward Sword, where, by the way, if you haven't figured it out yet. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that scene from Skyward Sword where... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember if you've gotten to that point yet. Um, <laughs> well, 
hello, it was in the concert, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, the one where Link is running towards Zelda. Zelda hands him the harp, and he's able to break through and slash down on... How can I forget his name? He's such a wonderful character. Garahim. Uh, and he's about to slash down on Garahim. There was a lot of use of piece, bits and pieces from that particular cut scene in Skyward Sword. Yes, and also lots of compilations like, okay, here's Zelda with the light arrows. Here's Zelda with the light arrows. Here's Zelda with the light arrows. <laughs> yeah, a lot of shots of Zelda with the light arrows, as you just said, uh, or... Link pulling the sword out from the stone for the Master Sword, or scenes where the Master Sword is getting powered up and brought back to life, mm -hmm. or in Skyward Sword's case, forged into the Master Sword. Mm -hmm. So do you have more, or should we start wrapping things up? Let's see. Gameplay footage, bridging videos, wonderful audience, plenty of time to applaud between numbers. Oh, intermission. It tricked me. Because intermission was more like three quarters of the way through the concert. I always thought intermissions were closer to halfway. Yeah, that's another thing. I was like, I was like wait a minute, there's only like one more like song set and then it was over, not including the encores? I'm like, wow, that's really impressive because I would think the orchestra would need a break sooner because playing all that music and handling all those instruments is very difficult and energy consuming and that's part of the reason you have intermissions. Also so that everyone can run to the concession stand. Or restrooms. Mm -hmm. God, those lines were insane. <laughs> no kidding. I was able to clear out all my street passes and get new street passes before I could get our bottled water. I feel so sorry for the cosplayers during that. Because some of their costumes are very elaborate. So like, ooh, 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 being crowded like that. Yeah, because it was very, very crowded. Mm hmm Let's see. Speaking of cosplay, there was a Ganondorf from Twilight Princess, a Zelda from Twilight Princess, a very nice kind of custom Princess Zelda. Um, She was kind of like a weird combination between Sheik and Princess Zelda. So that was cool. Mm-hmm. And, of course, a lot of links. Mm-hmm. And this one guy had a really awesome sword and shield set. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of people were wearing Legend of Zelda t-shirts, sweatshirts, dresses, etc. Cool t-shirt I hadn't seen before. A Nightmare Before Christmas, Majora's Mask crossover, Nightmare on Termania. Mm-hmm. We were dressed very nicely ourselves. <laughs> I was in a nice black outfit with a tie. I very... Rarely wear ties. This is why this tie actually ended up being a little small. We had to do some tricks to make it look long enough. Also why we had to resort to the internet because it had both been so long we forgot how to tie a tie. <laughs> and I'm thinking I really should have worn brown slacks instead of the black ones. Because then it would have been more like a very subtle, casual Link cosplay. Mm. No, very nice green top, Triforce earrings, brown slacks, but I don't have any brown shoes. Mm. Yeah. It would have all gone nice together, but what you were wearing was very nice. Thank you. Oh, well, I think that just about wrapped things up. We both had a very good time. We really hope to go and see another one. And we hope you have a chance to go to one of these concerts if you are a Legend of Zelda fan, because it is amazing. And if you don't have a chance, or if you truly have no clue what we're talking about, the orchestra did a piece on the Stephen Colbert show, so you can go check it out over on Stephen Colbert's channel. Or YouTube. Stephen Colbert's channel would be a channel on YouTube, Lux. <laughs> Not always. He, um, for instance, he has his own website, too, so. All right, let me rephrase. So you can go check it out on Stephen Colbert's YouTube channel. And I hope you've enjoyed our raving about Legend of Zelda, Symphony of the Goddesses, Master Quest Concert enjoyed this video please consider subscribing none of our other videos are zelda yet but we do talk about lots of other things that we like and none of lux's art this time really uh you can check out his artwork on deviantart and tumblr also if you really like him he has a patreon